Hello, I'm Wendy Brockman and welcome to Denver Decides. Denver Decides is a community partnership dedicated to accessible and transparent elections. The partnership includes the League of Women Voters of Denver, Interneighborhood Cooperation, Historic Denver, and is presented by Denver 8 TV. Today we are presenting a candidate forum in anticipation of the municipal election coming up on Tuesday, May 7th. Among other offices, this election includes the candidates vying to represent District 11 as a member of Denver City Council. District 11 is located in the far northeast corner of Denver. Our format is a pretty standard one. The candidates will have timed opening and closing statements. The opening statements will be followed by rounds of questions that have been submitted by the organizers of the forum. Since we do have a time limit, we may not get to all of the questions, but all the questions we do ask will have to be answered and all of the responses will be timed. We have our timers out there to tell us where we are so you know how, if you're going over your time. So let's begin by meeting the candidates vying to represent District 11 as your next city council member. And please hold your applause until both candidates have been introduced. The candidates are standing left to right facing the audience in the order that their names will appear on the ballot. So on my right is Christine Alonzo, and on my left is Stacey Gilmore. Welcome to both of you. Let's welcome our candidates. Okay, we're gonna begin with one minute opening statements from each candidate. So let's begin with an opening statement from Christine Alonzo. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for being here this evening and thank you to Denver Decides for this opportunity. Okay. My name is Christine Alonzo and I am a candidate for city council in District 11. For someone who has lived in this community for over 30 years, in the far northeast corridor, I know how expensive it has gotten to live here. We need affordable housing, but more importantly, we need affordability for everyone. Just recently, City Council voted to increase wages for workers at DIA. We need $15 an hour for everyone, not just the workers at DIA. As someone who has spent 25 years organizing their community and organizing in labor. I am also a civil rights commissioner to the United States. I am a proud single mother who has lived and raised my kids in this community and all of them went to Denver Public Schools. All right, your time is up, Ms. Alonzo. Thank you for this opportunity. Stacy Gilmore, you have one minute. Hello, I'm Stacy Gilmore and I'm the councilwoman for District 11. Over the past three and a half years, we have worked together tirelessly on priorities that you've identified. Affordable housing, workforce development, improving our food access options, and closing transportation and mobility gaps. When I ran in 2015, I promised that I would work every day to make sure that you get the information, the resources, and the access to amenities that our neighborhoods deserve. And I'm proud that we have secured over $162 million in infrastructure improvements in my time in office. We have done that together. And I thank you for being here tonight. I'm honored to be here and share our work going forward. And we're going to make sure that in the next four years, we get even more done around affordable housing, workforce development, infrastructure and mobility, gap closure, and making sure that we have the full service grocery stores that our neighborhood deserves. All right, let's begin with our rounds of questions for the candidates. Each candidate will have one minute to answer each question and we'll go in the reverse order of the opening statement. So we'll start uh, with Stacey Gilmore. In dis is District 11 a safe place to live and work and are the streets as safe as they could or should be? District 11 is a safe place to work and live. We can always do better to make sure that our roadways are safe. We have an initiative in the city called Vision Zero to make sure that we protect, protect our pedestrians, that we have bike lanes, that we make sure that we have traffic signals. We also need to look at our lighting. We need more street lights. We need to make sure that we've got traffic signals where we need them, where we have left-hand turn arrows. But we also need to make sure that we're supporting our police department. We need more officers 
officers on the street. We need officers on bicycles in our neighborhood. We need officers walking in our neighborhood. We need to have the community feel like if they need to see an officer, it's not going to be a day or two days before they see somebody driving by, but they're actually going to see them in our parks, in our rec centers, in our schools, and throughout the community. All right, Christine Alonzo, your answer to that question. No, uh, we do not live in a safe community. I think when people in this community are being displaced because they can't afford to live here, that is not safety. I think when people, especially our elders, our seniors, are not able to get the proper transportation to get to a full service grocery store, that is not safety for our community. I think when our children in this community are not getting the childcare that is required or should be required by the parents, we are not living in a safe community. So no, we do not live in a safe community. Although our infrastructure has improved some, we could do way better than where we're at now. We have not seen, I think the city, city council currently did not foresee the growth in this, this community, and I think that they failed miserably when it came to expanding our roads and making sure that the infrastructure was that in which we needed. All right, our next question is submitted by the neighborhood organizations, and we're going to start with Christine. Again, you have one minute. While younger in years, District 11 is home to neighborhoods with rich social history. What places do you see as most important to residents' sense of cultural and identity? I think it's really important for our community to have a community center. A community center. Um, one of the things that, having lived here 30 years, uh, I miss is the ability to go to high school and football games, where it was, which was the hub at Montbello High School for people in this community. That's where everyone gathered to talk about issues in their community, to talk about politics, to ensure that people were in the know of what was going on. I do appreciate the, um, the, the park and the lake that they have in Green Valley Ranch, which I have enjoyed myself multiple times as a runner. The thing is that we don't have the same amenities here in Montbello that they have in Green Valley Ranch. So I think that we need more community support for the community that exists in Montbello. All right, Stacy Gilmore, you have one minute for the same question. All right, thank you. We do have a rich cultural history in the Montbello community and in Green Valley Ranch as well. With Green Valley Ranch being a younger neighborhood, we maybe don't have the historical sites that Montbello has. And those historical sites that I really think about when I think about Montbello specifically is, and it's not in District 8, but it's the Airy P. Taylor building where my council office is at the front side of Montbello. That is named after a civil rights leader who we need to remember and recognize. Also, the Montbello High School campus. That is another important cultural hub, and I look forward to working along with you as the community, but then also from City Council to make sure that we are holding our DPS representative accountable to create a strategic plan that is community-led to make sure that we bring back the educational opportunities that our neighborhood wants to see because it is part of our rich history and culture of the neighborhood. We also, in Green Valley Ranch... Your time is oh, up. Thank you. All right, the next question for our candidates for City Council District 11, we're going to begin with Stacy. Initiative 300 has drawn the ire of many. What are the alternatives to helping the needs of homeless in Denver and Capitol Hill? The alternatives are that we need to make sure as a city that we prioritize transitional housing. It's not safe, it's not humane to have people sleeping on our streets. People deserve to have a roof over their head, to have clean bedding, to have clean to have food, to be able to shower. We need to make sure that we as a city, but then also regionally with different partners, are ensuring that transitional housing is at the forefront. We also need to preserve our current housing in our neighborhoods. Resources are also very important. When we have traditional housing, we need to have those wraparound services when people will be able to make sure that they have workforce development opportunities, that they're making sure that they're cleaning up their records, so that they can be employed, that we're treating substance abuse and mental health issues, and that we're getting them into treatment, and that we're supporting them. Thank you, Stacy. Christine? Um, I happen to agree with Ms. Gilmore on the 300. We need more affordable housing. 
I think we are suffering uh, in the city and county of Denver with a, cri a housing crisis. We don't have enough transitional housing. We don't have enough affordable housing for people in general. And so that's one of the issues that we're facing with the homeless population. That with combined with mental health services that we are not providing, uh, substance abuse issues that we are not addressing, and overall help that they need to find employment and to make sure that we are providing them with the necessary resources that they need. All right. The next question submitted by the forum organizers, and Christine, you'll be the first to answer. You'll have one minute. Would you be willing to put sustainability at the forefront of your tenure, even if it meant Denver would reduce its current rate of growth in order to first address air, water, and transportation issues? Absolutely. I think that we have grown. We have seen the city of, and county of Denver grow uh, rapidly, and we have not been prepared for that growth. And I think that um, the air that we are um, breathing, the water that we drink, is vitally important. And you know, we are we are facing a, a fracking crisis in the far northeast corridor as well that we have not even begun to address. So, water and air are very, very important to the sustainability of just humankind. All right, Stacy. Thank you. You know, I'm a wildlife biologist, and so when you start talking about the environment, clean water, clean air, that is what I've spent my entire professional career doing and making sure that our young people and families knew the value of that. If we decide as a city to stop growth, we need to make sure that we do that very carefully because when you stop growth, you immediately begin to make the housing costs rise because people don't see an opportunity to get into that new housing market. We also need to take considerations around as we continue to grow, we need to encourage diversity of housing product and that means density. All neighborhoods across Denver need to take in new housing. They need to take in new residents. It cannot only be right here in our neighborhood, but all neighborhoods of, of Denver need to really look at density. And density in building, it makes sure you have conservation of heat. All right, your time is up. This next question comes from an audience member, and Stacey, you'll be first to answer this one. From the audience member, I believe creating and integrating housing with Medicaid is a vision for all of us. How would you help local faith-based organizations implement this vision? I would do what I do whenever I sit down with a community group. I want to hear their ideas, I want to learn more about it, and then I want to figure out how we can problem solve and how we can come together and bring in the right stakeholders to make it a reality. I've done that with a lot of different groups in our neighborhood, and I look forward to continuing to do that. And we also write letters of support for grant applications. We reach out to state funding mechanisms, federal funding mechanisms, and it make, we need to make sure that we're bringing all the stakeholders to the table to make this idea a reality. Okay, can you repeat the question for me, yes, please? Yes, from an audience member. I believe creating and integrating housing with Medicaid is a vision for us all. How would you help local faith-based organizations implement this vision? I think the first thing to do here is to go to the faith-based community and get their ideas and ask them what they foresee as being that, the best idea to develop that type of plan. I also think that we need to expand it outside of faith-based communities or organizations because I think that there's a lot of nonprofit organizations that exist currently that could continue, could help in implementing that process for our aging population as well as for other folks that need that type of housing. Okay, this question is going to start with you, Christine. From the audience, seriously, why should I vote for you versus the other candidate here at this event? Um, I think that you should vote for me because as someone who has lived in this community for 30 years, who has fought for workers' rights for 25 of those years, who has worked in community, who has done 
a lot to bring together our community, the Latino community, as well as the African American community together is a reason to support me. I, do, I will not support the development that is currently going on in our community. Although there are some good actors in development, I see that there is a lot of development that is happening that is not considerate of what the community's needs are. And that's one thing that I would, I would definitely uh, oppose, as well as I am one of 21 individuals who voted to uh, ban fracking in the city and county of Denver. So those are two of the primary reasons why I think you should vote for me. All right, Stacy. now your turn. I think you, that you should vote for me because I have consistently shown up in our neighborhood. I've been in the neighborhood for over 25 years. My kids have grown up with many of you as their grandparents, aunts, uncles, because you have seen me in the neighborhood. You've seen my family in the neighborhood. We just didn't show up to run for city council. We have been here consistently. I worked in 2008 to co-found the Montbello 2020 registered organization with Ms. Ann White. I ran an educational nonprofit called Environmental Learning for Kids for 23 years. We have consistently been in the neighborhood and with our work and partnership, we now have three national grocers looking at our area to locate. I am so proud of our neighborhood and we need to bring our neighborhood together, not be divisive. Okay, one more question and we're gonna start with Christine. Will you vote for Ordinance 300, also known as the right to survive? Please explain why. I will vote yes on the right to survive. And I think that the reason that we are where we're at right now with the homelessness and the criminalization of the homeless is because we have not been hearing or addressing the pleas of the people that are homeless. And so I will vote yes to ensure that we do better for our homeless population because we are not doing what we should be doing as a city right now, and that is why I will support it. Okay, Stacy. I would vote against uh, Initiative 300, and the reason I would is because we took a trip to Los Angeles. Los Angeles has an ordinance similar to what we're proposing in Denver. The police cannot handle the subculture of crime that happens when people are allowed to camp on the streets, when they're allowed to camp in the right of way, when they're allowed to camp underneath our overpasses. It is unsafe. The amount of sexual assaults and rape for women and both men go up astronomically when people are camping outdoors. Our residents, our family members, our neighbors deserve to have a roof over their head and we need to prioritize and invest in transitional housing and wraparound services. All right, thank you ladies. Now we are going to do what is called the lightning round. So you guys can I, do... Can I just make a point of clarification? I just want to make sure that I answered the question correctly. Was the question that I would support the right to survive, was that the question? Yes. That's the way it was framed? Would you support it? Yes. Okay. Thank you. All right. So the lightning round, you get a yes, no, or pass. No expanding on uh, your answer, okay? So we're going to return to ballot order, and we will begin, begin with Ms. Alonzo, and we're just going to do... Yes, no, pass, back and forth, okay? If elected or re-elected, will you introduce an ordinance barring fracking in Denver? Yes. No. Have you attended your neighborhood association meeting in the last six months? No. Yes. Should the city of Denver create a mechanism that would hold the mayor more accountable? Yes. Yes. Was the salary and benefit package that comes with the job of being on city council a factor in your deciding to run for office? No. No. Do you own season tickets for any of Denver's major sports teams? No. No. Are you in favor of safe injection sites in Denver? Yes. Yes. Do you believe that Denver's current plans to expand and repair sidewalks are adequate? No. Yes. Have you done any volunteer work in your district? Yes. Yes. Do you think Denver needs more green space? Yes. Yes. Did you participate in the recent Denver right planning process? No. Yes. 
Do you support the continued use of tax incentives to recruit firms to relocate to Denver? No. Yes. That's it for the lightning round. Nice Thank job, you. guys. <laughs> they were unflappable. <laughs> All right, so now you guys uh, get a chance to ask each other a question. All right, so we're going to start uh, with ballot order. So, Christine, we're going to start with you. You can ask Stacy a question, <clears throat> and then you'll have one minute to answer, okay? Whenever you're ready. Stacy, I'd like to know how effective your representation has been given that you have recused yourself from 10% of the votes affecting your community, your district, and you have failed to attend 20% of city council meetings. Well, Christine, I would question your statistics first. And the votes that I abstained on were maybe votes that there was a conflict of interest that I needed to abstain on. But beyond that, I have made it my priority to always be at city council, to always be at committee, and to be fully present. And I spend every waking moment, you can ask my family, you can ask my community. I am always working, I give everyone my cell phone, and I would question your statistics, frankly. The statistics are directly from a CORA request. Uh, you only, no follow-ups, we just have the one question. Um, Stacy, you now have a chance to ask Christine a question. Thank you. I have been honored to be supported by community members, local organizations, unions, and businesses. In the past three and a half years, together with my community, my council office has planned for, fundraised, or either led or partnered on over 40 events. The community here today, and I have put in hundreds of hours, evenings and weekends, where we've worked together on behalf of our community. I've been working in the community for 25 years, and to be honest, Christine, I have rarely seen you at any community events or meetings. So how do you think you can garner support in and from our community when you have not consistently been here and been present for our work? I think that's a great question. And, you know, um, I have been in the community. I may not have been to the meetings that you're speaking of, or to the um, volunteering that you have done, which I think uh, in part comes to with the job that you uh, currently serve in. Um, I think people should vote for me because as someone who has lived here for 30 years, whose children have been raised in this community, and who have definitely been um, part of this community, this thriving community. You may have not have, may have not seen me, uh, Stacy, but I have definitely been here. And I think I uh, actually have had meetings in your office when I served as the executive director of Colorado. All right, we have one more question. And Christine, you get to ask it. Stacy, I'd like to know why you voted nine times to extend the contracts at DIA for oil and gas wells to continue to operate? I voted because it was an enterprise business that was already occurring at Denver International Airport. It was actually around an Anadarko uh, natural gas line. It was already a contract. We were already doing that work. Many of the fracking happened out at the airport in the 1970s, way before I was on city council. And so I voted for those because they were enterprise, they were bringing money to the city, and they the closest well is over 26,000 feet from any residential. Prop 112 was only asking for 2,500 square feet. All right, ladies, now we begin our closing statements. Each candidate will have one minute, and we're going to reverse the order from opening statements, which means we will begin with Stacy Gilmore. Thank you. I have dedicated my life to the community. I am here. I am not going anywhere. You know how I work. I listen, and I work for you. You tell me you want to work on something, I will do my best to make sure that we bring all the stakeholders to the table. We bring all the supports to the table. I will work tirelessly to make sure that we have the infrastructure improvements that we need, 
that those three national grocery store chains that are looking at our neighborhood, we have a couple locate out here, that we continue to put resources towards affordable housing, and that we make sure that we're closing the gaps around workforce. We need to make sure that we are securing and stabilizing our neighborhood for the next 20, 30, 40 years. I'm Stacy Gilmore. I would be honored to earn your vote on, Mar on May 7th, May 7th, Remember, it's your voice and it's our community. All right, Christine Alonzo, your closing statement. <clears throat> I would like to thank everyone for attending this evening. Come May 7th, we have an opportunity to vote for a city council that not only cares about the community, but comes from the community. Gone should be the days where developers are not listening to what our communities need and putting their profits before people. Gone should be the days where we are unable to make ends meet because costs are going up and wages are remaining stagnant. We should be able to take care of our elders and provide good, affordable childcare for our kids. This isn't about taking a chance on who has raised the most money from special interests. It should be a clear choice of who has been, who has the best interests of the community. This is the change that we need. If that is the change that you want, then you need to vote for me, Christine Alonzo, for City Council District 11 on May 7. Thank you. Thank you. And our audience, we can now show our appreciation for our candidates. Thank you to you both and thank you to our audience. And thanks also to our Denver Decides partners, which include Interneighborhood Cooperation, the League of Women Voters of Denver, and Historic Denver. Denver Decides is presented by Denver 8 TV. We hope we've given you a fair look at each candidate vying to represent those of you here in District 11 on Denver City Council. As for complete election information online, you can go to denverdecides.com. I'm Wendy Brockman. Thanks for joining us.